Welcome to our lectern line. Sometimes it helps if we draw the line so we can kind of take a look at it and perhaps even draw the parallel vector. But how do we do that? Let's say that we're given the equation of a line and we're trying to draw that in three-dimensional space. Well, first of all, it's a good idea to draw the x, the y, and the z axis and to label some sort of coordinate system so that you can see where the numbers should fall. Now we're going to take the line equation right here, the general equation, and find the parallel vector. And we do that by looking at the denominators. So we know that the parallel vector v1 is equal to 2 in the i direction, plus 1 in the j direction, plus 3 in the k direction. We also need to find a point on the line, and there's one point given by the numbers over here. So we can say that point 1 is equal to 2 for the x-coordinate, 8 for the y-coordinate, and 10 for the z-coordinate. So the first thing we should do is find that point on three-dimensional space. So first what we do is we go two units in the x-direction, so 1, 2. Then we go eight units in the y-direction, which is basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that would be right about here. So first we go to there, then we go to here, and now we go upwards in the z-direction, but notice that we are ahead of the yz plane. So now we need to go up 10 units, and so that's about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So right about there, and notice if we then say this point lies on that line. Okay. But what direction does the line go? Well, for that, we use the parallel vector. So that means we can find another point by adding 2 in the x direction, 1 in the y direction, and 3 in the z direction. So let's do that. So we're going to add 1 in the x direction, which is 1 in this direction, like this. Oh, no, 2 in the x direction, sorry, 2. So that's 1, that's 2. 1 in the y direction, so I go 1 to the right, which is right here. And then 3 in the z direction, so 1 two, three, and I make another point. So I can do that again a second time. I go one, two in the x direction, one in the y direction, one, two, three in the z direction. And notice all those points will fall on that line. Okay, now I have to think about it just a little bit because just purely connecting that doesn't give you the perspective. Notice that the line, when I go up in the z direction, goes to the right, in the y direction and goes this way in the x direction. So the line, as it goes up, goes farther and farther away from the xz plane. And then as it goes this way, it goes into the uh, yz plane. So notice I'm 10 units in the z direction up here. So that's, that's 10 units here. And here this is 13 units. And here that is 0, 0, well not 0, 0, but some number and 16 units. So I go up in the z direction here. Notice that I started at 2 in the x direction and I add 2 each time. So this is 2, this is 4, this is 6 in the x direction. And then for the y direction I start at 8 and I go to 9, I go to 10. So I go slightly outward, I go forward in the x direction and I go upward. So going backwards, notice that I find the next point right here. That gives me the point 0. So now x is 0, y is 7, and z is 7. The next point over here, that would be x being negative 2. That would be y being 6, and z being 4. If I go another point like this, then I have x equals negative 4, y equals 5, and z equals 1. And so that gives me kind of a feel where this goes. This goes behind the plane. Now I can connect all the dots like this. Well, kind of slightly off, but there it is. And so notice that the line will go, um, well, it goes towards the back, down, and towards the left. But it's skewed because since I'm going backwards, it appears as if I go to the right on the Y, but notice that the distance as I go further back, we'll get shorter and shorter and shorter, which means I'm moving in the y direction, the negative direction, I'm moving in the x direction, negative direction when I go down, and I go downward in the z direction. When I go up, when I go up in the z direction, I go to the right for y, and I go forward for x, so the line comes kind of, well, actually, it goes towards the y, comes forward, and goes up. 
Again, notice it is very difficult to get the perspective of how to draw the line, but at least it gives you a starting point by drawing the first point like this, then going up and down according to the changes in the direction given by the parallel vector. We can find the other points on the line and hopefully get something on a paper that looks somewhat reasonable. Wasn't so successful here, but at least that's the methodology used to try to draw the line in three dimensions. And that is how it's done. It's not easy, is it? It's not easy to visualize it. <laughs>